The Society of Actuaries Research Institute recently released a new research report studying group life mortality and the impact of COVID-19. The survey findings provided a, a high level view of the US group term life insurance mortality results during the pandemic, including data that starts back to the origins of the pandemic all the way now through September of 2021. And it's an update to similar surveys that we've released in the past. The survey data includes over 2 million claims and over 93 billion in earned premium from 20 of the top US group term life insurers. So Steve, let me ask you, you know, what level of excess mortality was indicated by this survey for group life carriers in that April 2020 through the September 2021 time period? Well, Dale, over that entire 18 month period, the survey is showing about a 21% spike. So about a 21% increase in the group life incurred mortality over the entire 18 month period. And, and that's on a claim count basis. Uh, if we were looking by face amount, it would have been slightly higher than that. And the 21% is all up slightly versus the 20% we had talked about six months ago. And one big driver of that increase is a very high excess mortality that we observed during just Q3 of 2021, which is when the Delta wave uh, was active. So if we were looking at just Q3 of 2021, the September data would have suggested uh, roughly a 38% spike in mortality over baseline expected. Uh, I will mention that uh, now that we have a, a couple of more subsequent months of data, it's likely that the 38% spike for just Q3 may drop down slightly to the low to mid 30s, but still far and away the highest excess mortality quarter thus far in the pandemic. And Steve, I'm wondering, you know, we've released past surveys on this. So what are some of the notable changes that you've seen since we issued the last group life survey about six months ago? Yeah, one more change I would highlight is that the, the pattern by age group has certainly changed. And again, when we're focused on just Q3, uh, we certainly see that the excess mortality in Q3 of 2021 was concentrated in the typical working ages. So call it 25 to 64. Uh, those ages have a, a lower starting baseline expected mortality. But on a relative basis, the excess mortality for 25 to 64 was very, very high. Call it 70 percent or higher just for Q3 of 2021. And Patrick, let me ask you, you know, an important question that we've been following since the start of the pandemic is how insured mortality, like in group life, either compares or might be different to the full population mortality. So from your perspective, how did this excess mortality in this group life survey compare to excess mortality in the U.S. population as a whole? For the full pandemic period, group life excess mortality percentages have been about 105% to 125% of U.S. population excess mortality percentages. So um, a little bit more of an excess over expected for the group life data. Now, it's important to remember that uh, before the pandemic, general population mortality rates were about three times the group life baseline mortality rates for typical working ages. So the, the group life data showing a higher excess mortality percentage is on a relative basis and not an absolute basis. Right, and, and, and maybe some insights too on how you've seen that relationship change over time during the pandemic. Early on in the pandemic, we observed that the group life survey data had lower excess mortality percentages than the US population. However, that trend reversed in the fourth quarter of 2020, and group life excess mortality has been higher in all quarters since then. One possible contributing factor to this effect has been a trend in excess mortality within the U.S. population, where we've seen in 2020, the percentages were roughly consistent across adult age groups. But in 2021, the excess mortality has been more concentrated in the younger adult ages, in the working age population, and less so in the over age 65 group. And that population has a higher intersection with the group life survey population, where there's more under 65 folks than there are in the, in the broader U.S. population. So that, in addition to the particularly adverse experience in the group life data in the third quarter for persons under 65, uh, have combined to... To, uh, to, to change that uh, relationship that we saw early on in the pandemic. 
you know, Steve, I've gone through the report. I guess there's a there's a huge set of information here. I guess any other key takeaways or additional insights that you see in your practice from this report? Yes, this is the first group life survey where we've been able to compare state level vaccination rates to the state level excess mortality percentages. Um, and, and the data that we've looked at would have been percentage being fully vaccinated by state as of uh, as of June 30th. And we've compared that to the Q3 excess mortality by state. And we, and we do indeed see that there's a moderate correlation. It's a negative correlation. So those states having the higher vaccination rates are showing a moderately lower excess mortality. And, and the R squared co correlation coefficient that we've seen is in the 0.32 to 0.38 range. So I will point out that correlation coefficient, it's well less than one. So certainly we expect there are other factors that are also influencing those variations in excess mortality by state. Um, and we would expect that things like climate and social distancing and masking practices uh, would be examples of, of the other factors influencing it. And, and then the one last observation we've seen, especially in this survey, is that the company specific claim completion factors are, are really showing volatility during these pandemic waves. And I guess that's not a surprise because uh, you think about the, the claim volumes going up and down, and uh, certainly that could be exacerbated if, if any of the carriers had staffing issues where there were either staffing shortages or, or if, staff were, if staff were out sick. Um, any of that could lead to claim backlogs building up or down and, and all of that volatility, uh, I guess, is just a way of saying that when we get to the ultimate excess incurred mortality that's fully revealed, it may vary a little bit more versus these early projections than, than what we typically might have expected. No, terrific report. Uh, Patrick, Steve, thanks for stopping by to discuss this really terrific, important report that examines U.S. group term life insurance mortality results during the pandemic with the data all the way through September of 2021. Thanks, Dale. I'm always happy to talk about our research. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Dale and Patrick. And for those of you watching, if you have any feedback or questions about this report, please feel free to contact us. Send us an email at research at soa.org. This report on group life mortality, especially with the impact of COVID-19, can be found on the SOA website at soa.org. Click on the Research Institute. And then if you click on COVID-19, you'll see that among the wide variety of mortality and other reports that we've put out surrounding the pandemic. Thanks for joining us today to learn more about these projects from the Society of Actuaries Research Institute.